Eugene. Chapter 1. Hello. My name is Charles Westover. I'm from a world called Pearl. It's very far away from your world, Earth, but it's also a lot closer than you think. For the most part, our world is the same as yours. We love a lot of the same things, like roller coasters, birthday parties, and swimming in pools. There, however, is one big difference. In our world, Pearl, we build our houses out of chocolate. Chocolate bedrooms, chocolate fireplaces, chocolate TVs, chocolate everything. The more expensive the house, the better the chocolate and more delicious the chocolate is. I know what you're thinking. What's to stop you from eating your own house? Well, the short answer is, we do eat our own houses. There's plenty of chocolate in my world, so that all the boys and girls can eat a little bit of their house, so long as they promise to rebuild the part of the house they ate the next day. Of course, my world is not without its problems, and there is one problem greatest of all. There lives a giant, and his name is Eugene. The problem with Eugene is his favorite thing in the whole wide world is chocolate. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, I love chocolate too, but Eugene has a great appetite, able to eat a full house in one giant breath. Eugene has eaten so much chocolate that even though chocolate is plentiful in our world, it will not last forever and will run out if he does not stop eating so much. Without chocolate, we wouldn't be able to make our homes anymore. This tale takes place when I was a boy of eight. I hope you enjoy my story that is very famous here in my world. Chapter 2 When I was eight years old, my best friend in the whole world was Jane, and well, she just happens to be a princess too. Our favorite thing to do was to go on long walks in the woods and look for animals. So naturally, Jane and I were walking in the woods. It was a cold December day. The snow on the ground was so cold that we didn't even leave footprints. It was completely silent as the squirrels and bears were sleeping in their little warm homes. The birds and butterflies had flown south to relax by the beaches and rainforests. Keep up, Charlie. You're always falling behind. Jane said this as she was twenty steps ahead of me as usual. She turned around and faced me. Remind me why we're friends again. As she said this, a white cloud from the cold puffed from her mouth, swirling into the December sky. We're friends because you like my jokes, of course, I replied confidently. What do you call a ghost girlfriend? Oh, brother, this ought to be good. His ghoul friend. Jane burst into a frantic laugh. You're a fuzzball, she said before running up and kissing me on the cheek. She suddenly froze, hearing something I didn't. You hear that? She whispered, bending down to one knee, placing her hand on the frozen ground. Jane, I don't... Shh. She interrupted. Finally, I heard the low rumble, which I recognized immediately. It was Eugene. Chapter 3 Jane and I raced through the snow-covered forest towards the castle, which we could now see in the distance. As we got closer, we could smell the fresh chocolate of the rich brown front gate. Children, hurry, follow me up the tower. It was King Henry, Jane's father, who loved us and his kingdom very much. He had long gray hair and a long gray beard, his welcoming eyes always accenting his gentle smile. We followed the king up the chocolate stairs and to the top of the chocolate lookout post. His finest knight James waited for us and bowed deeply. We still could not see Eugene, but knew his impending arrival as the rumbling intensified. My lord Henry, are we going to fire chocolate-covered garlic at Eugene? The knight proudly asked. No, not today, my boy. I have another plan, and I think it might just work. While the king said this, he gave me a small wink. Chocolate-covered garlic was a well-known weakness of Eugene. He hated garlic, and would always run away after he tasted it. However, by that time he usually had already eaten half the castle, which would take months to rebuild. I felt the king's sure hands rest on my shoulders before he spoke. My boy, I hope this works. As he said this, we could finally see the giant marching straight for us. Chapter 4 Eugene looked majestic now, in front of the great castle. He was just over fifty feet tall. 
that's about the size of two houses on top of each other. His two large arms blistered out of the tight sleeves on his red shirt. His stocky, powerful legs were large, of course, but short considering his size. He had short matted black hair and large dark eyes which scanned the castle with wild intensity, deciding which room to eat first. I love chocolate, the giant said in a deep voice as he considered this. My lord, I have a clean shot. It was Josiah, a young knight. He had his bow arched back, ready to fire the garlic at Eugene. Not today, young Josiah. Stand down. The king said sure and powerfully. The great giant charged and burst right through the chocolate gate. He stuffed his mouth full of the broken chocolate gate with delight. More, more, more! More chocolate! He said with malice and greed. He started by eating the great chocolate hall. He ate all the connected chocolate chambers and chocolate boudoirs. He ate all the chocolate chairs, the chocolate paintings, the chocolate tables, even the chocolate violin Maestro Salieri played. My lord, please, he'll destroy the whole castle, Josiah pleaded with the king, arching his bow back again. No, let him eat, the king replied, mind unchanged, head tilted up. Without resistance, the giant went on to eat more and more of the castle. He ate the chocolate pantry, the chocolate stable, even the magician's chocolate chamber with his chocolate cauldron and chocolate wands. The great knight James could take it no longer. He finally approached the king and kneeled before him. I have fought by your side and devoted my life to you. Please, let me stop the giant, James. The king said and paused, commanding the room. You are a great knight and loyal. Will you please trust my judgment and let him eat? Yes, my lord. Chapter 5 The giant continued to eat mouthful after mouthful of chocolate. Giant pieces of chocolate sticking to his beard, sticking underneath his fingernails, and sticking in between his yellow teeth. The castle was nearly demolished now, with only a few rooms left, and the tower which we were all standing on. He was halfway through eating the chocolate chapel. Please, no! It was Luigi, the great sculptor. He had carved a magnificent sculpture for the chocolate chapel. His sculpture of the kingdom's god was made of the most expensive and richest chocolate known. You will not eat this, no way! Luigi looked small standing between the giant and the sculpture. Luigi! The king said this, his name with gentle firmness. The sculptor sighed, lowering his head while nodding. He took one last look at his masterpiece before vacating the chapel. The giant's eyes exploded as he swallowed the sculpture whole. Ugh. The giant grunted deeply. His giant stomach turned and the swooshing noise that sounded like an octopus was stuck inside his belly. He clutched his stomach with both hands before crumpling to the ground. Chapter 6 My tummy hurts. The giant sobbed, rubbing his hands frantically on his stomach. The king smiled and gestured for myself and Jane to join him. We sat on his lap, each taking one of his legs before he began. Please, let this be a lesson. You must be humble and live a full life with control and discipline. Even something as delicious and pleasurable as consuming chocolate has its limits. And yes, even a giant can eat too much chocolate. Having too much of anything in this world has never done a person good. Please remember this. The great king stood up, patting us both on the head. He approached the giant, still sobbing. Please, make my tummy hurt. No more. The giant said defeated. Do you promise to control the amount of chocolate you eat from now on? The giant nodded slowly, fully understanding. Frederick, the king called to his magician. Can you make an extra large pink stomach healing milkshake? At once, my lord. While Frederick's lair was destroyed, he fixed up a shake in the great knight James's quarters. He returned with two knights carrying the heavy cauldron containing the potion. Drink this, the king said. 
The great giant took an enormous swallow from the large cauldron. He immediately felt better as the pink liquid coated his stomach. Eugene turned and smiled at the king. Chapter 8 Eugene promised from that day on to never eat any of the chocolate from the castle again, but the king refused. No, Sir Eugene, you may eat chocolate from my castle as long as you respect it and allow us to sustain it. With the amount of men I have, you may eat one room every week. Let us now be friends. The giant's lips curved. His smile beamed and warmed the kingdom's people all around him. With the giant now helping as a friend of the king, the castle was rebuilt in no time. Also, with the chocolate engineers and Eugene working together, they were able to make even more delicious chocolate using the best cocoa beans only Eugene could reach on the tall trees. This was the one thing that even cheered up the Italian sculptor Luigi, who was miserable with his sculpture destroyed. But now, with these precious cocoa beans, he could make an even better masterpiece. Bene, bene, Eugene, tutti bellissimo. The sculpture praised as he danced, playing his accordion in the street. And that, my friends, is my story about how amazing things can happen when we all work together, when we respect ourselves, when we respect others and the world we live in. The end. <laughs>